Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. All right, so today I may have reached a new low. I'm actually gonna be robbing parts off that to feed that. Well, let's not say robbing. How about we just say borrowing? Uh, I've got a few upgrades for the FJ60 that we're gonna be doing today. One of the things we are gonna be doing is robbing the tires, the wheels and tires off of this and putting them on there. And let me show you why. All right, coming on to the FJ60. Now, at the moment, she's running a set of 15 inch wheels on the Nitto Trail Grappler mud terrain tires. These are currently in a 33 by 12 and a half by 15. Uh, got some pretty good dry rot cracking all the way around. Every tire except the spare tire um, has got that going on. Um, so I'm thinking here, I'm gonna pull the tires, wheels and tires off of the FJ45 because the FJ45 is gonna be down for at least a few more months. Uh, and I'm currently running on this 35 by 12 and a half by 15 in the BFG Goodrich uh, KM3s. And these are brand new, uh, less than 20 miles on them. So that's my plan there. I'm gonna take those off, throw them on there. Uh, I also have some cool lighting upgrades, which I'm gonna show you and some stuff planned for the interior. So without further ado, let's crack her on. Okay, here's the first problem. Each one of these lug nuts keep rounding, not rounding off, but they get, get stuck inside of the socket. Let me show you what I mean. Probably be fine now, just you wait. Stuck. See that? Every single time. So let me show you what I'm doing. I'll give you a trick on how to get these out. Just go ahead and take, this is just an extension socket. Take your, uh, your socket that's got the stuck lug nut in it, place it over the top. Then take a slightly bigger socket. In this case, it's just a 15 16 on top of a 17 mil, just so it fits there. Give it a couple of whacks. And there we have it. That was actually one of the easier ones to get out, but you get the idea, it works a treat every time. All right, next up, headlights. Got these from Land Cruiser Engineering. I have no idea if they're any good. They're just a seven inch round headlight with a halogen bulb, but the truck does have a separate wiring harness so for the headlights, so it should, uh, should put out some good light. So let's install these and see how we go. All right, 20 minutes later, um, went in pretty easy. This truck already had a separate wiring harness here for the, uh, for the headlights. Uh, so I'm gonna put them in beforehand, so I got a separate uh, uh, relay there for the headlights. It did have in it this box, um, which we just took out. No idea what that's for. I'm thinking it's probably something to do, um, something to do with, these, uh, with these LEDs. So anyway, just took that out. All right, let me just close the hood and then um, turn the lights on and see how we look. All right, so I think they're a much better looking light, visually more appealing than those LED things I had going on. The verdict's still out on whether they're any good or not. I have absolutely no idea. Um, then just a couple of reviews I read online, but uh, these seven inch round headlights are pretty common in, in a variety of different vehicles. I still, need to, <clears throat> I still need to go ahead and aim them properly, so I'll wait until it's dark to do that. But anyway, for now, that's the light's done. Let's move on to the next thing. On to the next upgrade and improvement. So, uh, about a year or so ago, I managed to score a set of uh, FJ40 seats that were reconditioned and reupholstered by Icon of North America. Uh, if you guys don't know who Icon is, they make some really high-end, top quality, out of my league and out of most people's leagues, price range stuff. However, this was on eBay, along, like I said, with a pair of uh, a pair of J40 seats, which I have sitting in storage. And this is one of their one of their center consoles. Let me pull this thing out for you. 
so you can take a look. Hopefully we can fit it in the 60. Okay, here it is. Uh, all steel construction, much like the Tuffy console that you have. Uh, it's got a uh, nice pad right here that just goes on top of the console, rest your elbow on while you're driving. Um, what you've got is you've got a compartment here, this is for the stereo, but you cannot access that compartment unless you open this main compartment. So you've got a little push button lock here, which I guess this is locked so that you, for that exact reason, opens up on a nice gas strut and it has this rubberized piece of material. Lift that up and then it slides down, locks in place with a magnet and that's where your stereo would go. Place for your wallet and your cell phone, keys, whatever you want. Uh, two cup holders go on the front two cup holders and USB outlets to go on the rear. Um, so yeah, a nice uh, nice bit of kit, nine and a half inches wide. Not sure if it's gonna fit. Uh, if it is gonna fit, it's gonna be a real tight f squeeze in there. So, but anyway, let's pull the old console out, chuck this one in and uh, see how it looks. Okay, it's in, uh, it fits very tight between the two seats, but it fits nonetheless. Cannot get my handbrake. I literally cannot get my hand in there to, to release the brake. So either I don't use a handbrake, I just use the gear uh, to keep it, keep it in gear when I'm, when I'm parked, or, hmm, I do have another console that was in the FJ45, which I could borrow from that. Um, hmm. Maybe once I, if I put the FJ40 seats in here, it will give me more room width wise where I can get my hand in to that. It's just no room. I suppose I could do that and then I could do it like that. Uh, but, uh, hmm. but it's a nice console. I mean, it's nice. I don't have the pad on here yet, obviously, but, uh, the thing is cavernous. Look at all this space. So, good size console. Let's try again later with the FJ40 seats. All right, and here's option B. So this is the one that was in the FJ45. This is just a generic center console. I forget where I got it from now, but I think it was like 70 bucks or 80 bucks or something like that. But it's decent little uh, center console. Good uh, good pad on it. Got two cup holders here, two cup holders up there. Uh, just a little compartment up front. Uh, and, you know, good size compartment for all your junk in there. And the most important thing is I can still reach the handbrake. So, anyway, it's not uh, it's not bolted in yet. Um, it's not obviously designed to fit in here, so I'm going to make a couple of brackets. But that's the plan for now, until I go ahead and decide to remove these seats and put the FJ40 seats in. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Got the rear axle. Uh, just took all the rust off and uh, covered it with POR15, so hopefully we'll get some longevity out of the uh, this rear axle. I want to talk about oil for a second, uh, specifically rear diff oil. Now there's a few things you're going to need. Um, a 15 16 uh, socket or a 24 mil if you've got one of those. Uh, some 80 90 weight gear oil. Any gear oil will really do. I don't use anything special, anything fancy. It's really not necessary. Uh, I probably change out my gear oil um, more often than most people anyway. But the one thing I wanted to mention was some of the most important things is You've got two plugs here, you've got a top plug and a bottom plug. Go ahead and loosen the top plug first. Because if you don't, and you get the bottom one out, and this one's stuck, well now you don't have any way to get oil back in your diff. And I'm going to do an upgrade on this, let me show you what I have. I'll go ahead and get this loose, get this drained, and I'll show you what I've got. Okay, got the rear diff oil drained. It was really black and mucky and there was a lot of sludge on the bottom of the drain plug, so it was clearly time for another change. Um, as far as the plugs go, they're both the same size. Uh, one of them has a magnet on the bottom. You kind of see that right there. And the other one does not. And the idea is this one goes in the bottom of the sump, of course, and this one on the top. And 
you know, any shavings or anything that might be an issue with the, with the rear diff is going to collect on that magnet so you can get a good telltale sign. Uh, when you take it out. But the problem, the thing these do share in common is, is that this 5 16 or 24 mil head has a tendency to round off. Now these are in pretty good shape. Uh, I haven't uh, had any issues with these at the moment, but that's not to say that they couldn't round off in the future and I have seen them where they really round off to the point where they, wait, they may actually come out. So I'm going to do an upgrade today uh, to these. And uh, now these are the same size, but they are a uh, a diff drain plug with a hex key head on it. And you can see here it takes a 3 8 inch hex key and uh, just goes in there like that. Makes it a lot easier to get out uh, in the future and it prevents it from stripping as well. Uh, also we'll get some new crush washers, we'll throw those on there too. Now one other thing I would highly recommend, and you can get this from any auto parts store or even online, and that is one of these. This is a just a hand pump. Uh, any bottle will work. This is off uh, some old diesel fuel additive that I've just reused in the bottle. But yeah, just to make it handy, you'll put it in the top, pump that away, um, and it'll be a, a lot easier to get in. And of course, when it's full, when it starts dribbling out the top, then you know it's full. So anyway, we'll go ahead, throw some uh, oil in this, and then we'll replace those diff plugs and go from there. Oh, and one other thing. Don't forget to put one of these in your toolkit. Last thing you want to be uh, looking for is something or somebody who may have one of these when you're stuck on the side of a trail or you have to pull that diff out for some reason or, or whatever and, and nobody has a 3 8 inch hex key. So let's crack on. Hi right, guys, I've been, uh, been driving around for a few days with the new light bulbs. Just want to give you a quick update before I finish up this video. So I've decided to give these a go. These are a 6000K H4 replacement bulb. Um, it's uh, using the LED technology. Um, not overly impressed uh, with the lights at the moment. Um, they're okay, they're what you'd expect from an H4 halogen bulb. But let me go ahead and show you what the difference is. I've replaced the driver's side with this bulb and I've still kept the H4 halogen on that side. So let me, uh, let me turn on real quick and show you the difference. All right, there we have it. Um, not sure how well that's picking up on camera, uh, but you can see the light from the driver's side is a lot sharper. Seems to put out a lot more throw. In fact, it's not even nighttime here yet and you can see the light kind of reflecting off my cabinet over there which uh, you cannot see when they were both halogens. So I'm gonna run these, give these a go. I'll give you an update on them. If you guys are interested, I will throw the link down below and I'll list the part number in this video. And um, yeah, about $33 on Amazon. So we'll see how these do. All right, guys, and that is going to be a wrap for today's video. Sure appreciate you watching me. Um, if you've got any thoughts, leave them in the comments down below. I do read all the comments. I try and respond to as many as I can. So if you've got any suggestions of videos you'd like to see or any questions about what I've done to the 60 so far or what we've got planned for the 60, please be sure to reach out. Also, check us out on Instagram, at Music City Cruises. I really appreciate all the subscribers so far. I cannot believe we've got as many as we have already. Uh, it really is humbling, and I do appreciate it. Uh, give us a thumbs up. Again, smash that subscribe button if you haven't. We've got some real cool, real cool content coming soon, and uh, we'll catch you next time.